In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through Chapter 2.7, Price Elasticity of Supply. Price elasticity of supply is the degree of responsiveness of the quantity supplied of a product following a change in its price. The calculations is as follows. The percentage change in quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price. When PES is above 1, this means that it is elastic. If it's below 1, it means it is inelastic. If it's equal to 1, this means that it is unitary. If it's at 0, then it will be perfectly inelastic. And in the case for perfectly elastic PES equals infinity. For goods that are price elastic, the percentage change in quantity supplied for a product is higher than the change in price. So this means a small change in price will mean a higher percentage change in quantity supplied. Some examples include printing paper, birthday cards, and luxurious goods. This is a diagram illustrating price elastic supply. As you can see here, when the price falls from P1 to P2, quantity supplied drops significantly from Q1 to Q2. So clearly, the percentage change from Q1 to Q2 is larger than the percentage change from P1 to P2. Moving on to price inelastic supply. This is the percentage change in quantity supplied for a product that is lower than the change in its price. Despite much higher prices, there will be a lower change in quantity supplied due to its elasticity. Some examples include very old fine wines, natural gases, oil, handmade pottery, and hand-drawn artwork. Here's a diagram illustrating price inelastic supply. As you can see here, when price falls significantly from P1 to P2, quantity supplied only falls from Q1 to Q2. Again, a large percentage change in price and a small percentage change in quantity supplied. Moving on to unitary price elastic supply. This occurs when the percentage change in quantity supplied and the prices are exactly the same percentage wise. Here's a diagram illustrating unitary price elastic supply. Please note that the steepness of the supply curve does not matter for unitary price elasticity because it has to measure relative change and not absolute changes. So for any of these supply curves passing through the origin here, every percentage change in price will always lead to the same percentage change in quantity supplied, regardless of whether the curve looks steep or flat on the diagram. Moving to perfectly elastic supply. This is when the quantity supplied changes without any changes in the price itself. And if the prices were to increase, all supply is lost. Some examples include ebooks, mobile applications, and foreign exchange markets. And this is the diagram to illustrate it when price increases or supply is lost. And moving on to perfectly inelastic supply. So, this is when the quantity supplied is completely unresponsive to the changes in price. Some examples include concert tickets per event, think Taylor Swift concert tickets, rare artwork and the supply of Bitcoin, as there's only 21 million of them to ever circulate into the market. And this is a diagram showing price inelastic supply. As you can see, when the price increases or decreases, quantity supplied remains the same. Moving on to the determinants of price elasticity of supply. The first determinant is time. If you give a firm more time to produce goods and services, they will produce more. That gives them a higher PES. A mass-produced or manufactured product will have a significantly higher PES as they can produce large quantities of these products in a very short amount of time. Think toothpicks and A4 paper. Next is unused capacity. As high spare capacity allows firms to utilize this space and increase supply quickly. Digital products will have an unlimited capacity as they can supply their products at the market price. The reason for this 
is the cost to supply an additional product is essentially zero. So supplying an extra five units or 5,000 units is exactly the same. So it's really easy for the firms to respond to the needs for the market. The next one is storage. Goods that can be stored for a long period of time would be generally more elastic, so high quantities of storage will allow the firm to make market changes very quickly. So firms will be able to supply the finished goods relatively easily. Having an elastic supply is good for customers as firms can respond quickly to the needs of the market, say Christmas cards or Mother's Day cards or Father's Day cards, etc. etc. And also, it gives price stability as sufficient supply prevents huge demand spikes increasing the price of these goods. For the firms, they can invest in better storage to prolong shelf life of their products, they can keep large volumes of inventories, they can adopt the latest manufacturing technology, and by doing this, this gives them the ability to respond to market needs quickly, leading to more profits. And in the case for governments, they can provide subsidies to firms to increase their output or reduce the red tape or restrictions for firms so they can provide output relatively quickly or adjust labor laws, allowing additional productivity within the economy. I hope that helped. I hope you have a good day. Bye bye.